Broadcasting from the Business Radio X studio in Alpharetta, it's time for Profit Sense with Bill McDermott. And good morning, everyone. I am not Bill McDermott. I'm John Ray, but I'm here with Bill McDermott. And uh, we've got a special edition of Profit Sense for you today, uh, an interview with Bill on advice he's giving his clients and business owners about uh, uh, what to do in the current environment we find ourselves in and how we can better serve our clients. Uh, But first, I want to remind you that this show is presented by McDermott Financial Solutions. McDermott Financial helps business owners improve cash flow and profitability, find financing, and break through barriers to expansion and financially prepare to exit their business. And now I want to welcome the namesake, Bill McDermott. Bill, great to have you on your own show, pal. (laughs) Uh, Thanks, John. I appreciate you doing this and hope you and your family are healthy. Uh, Thank you. They are, and same to you. I hope you and yours are all healthy and well and safe. Yeah, everybody's doing well. Thank you. That's awesome. So... Let's talk a little bit about there are a couple of things on the agenda, but one is just remind everyone kind of what your what your day job is with with McDermott Financial. We mentioned a little bit at the top of the show about what you do, but that might set the the table a little bit for some of the advice you give later. Sure. So um, uh, two things primarily, John. Uh, business owners are facing. Uh, cash flow issues and profitability issues in these uncertain economic times. And uh, certainly you can go through those alone, but a lot of times, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like going fishing. Uh, you can go and fish in certain spots, go on the lake, go to where you think the fish are, uh, or you can hire a guide. And that guide knows exactly where the fish are, at any point in time. And so I, I play that guide that can help that business owner uh, navigate through times of economic uncertainty or uh, when times are good, go through economic expansion. Uh, the other thing that is equally important is uh, even though we are going through a time of economic uncertainty, uh, loan approvals at banks are at an all-time high. Uh, interest rates are at an all-time low. Uh, we'll certainly spend a little time talking this morning about the president's uh, program for economic injury disaster loans to small businesses. Uh, there are 30 million small businesses in the United States uh, that could potentially be impacted by COVID-19, uh, and there are some steps uh, that can be taken if you, as a small business owner, uh, are eligible Uh, and have not been able to obtain credit elsewhere. So finding financing and profitability coaching is really what McDermott Financial does. Let's talk about the profitability advice and coaching that you're giving right now. That's your advice and what you're talking about with clients has obviously changed in the last couple of weeks. Um, Give folks a, a big sense of what you're suggesting to your clients. Yeah, so I've had two conversations uh, that seem to be some recurring themes. There are um, a set of business owners who went through the Great Recession of 2009. Uh, This is certainly different circumstances, but the economic impact uh, could be similar. I'm not sure that we're actually in a recession at the moment, but we're certainly in a time of economic uncertainty. Uh, Second, there are business owners that have started their business in the last 10 years. Uh, Their entire experience has really been one of economic uh, expansion. Uh, Profits and cash flow have been increasing and all of a sudden faced with a uh, potential time of uncertainty. Uh, This is new territory for them. Uh, For those that have been through it before, Uh, Primarily, I have spent a little time uh, talking to them uh, and encouraging them to talk to their clients about their clients' clients, uh, understanding how they can be impacted. Uh, Also, uh, and I think 
you might have uh, said this in a conversation that you and I have had recently. Uh, business owner needs to understand that their value proposition may have changed positively or negatively as a result of uh, the, the times that we're going through. Uh, for me, uh, I see an opportunity to be a real resource uh, for small business owners in helping them navigate this economic injury disaster loan program. Uh, and then thirdly, just helping people get the word out, uh, pure and simple, so that they know that there is a, uh, there is a method uh, to how you navigate this. But, but I think the first thing is really uh, having a, a proper mindset. And I'd, I'd like to go back to that a little bit maybe uh, later in the show. Uh, the things specifically, tactically, that a business owner should go through, whether they've gone through this before or not, is really make sure that their client base is diversified. Uh, I talked to a client last week that has about 30% of their business in one particular industry. Mm. Uh, they're asking for greater deposits up front. Um, you know, I would recommend that uh, any biz, small business right now build cash reserves. Uh, cash is king, as they say. And so if, to the extent that you can build some reserves, uh, collect a little faster. I was talking to a client this past week that uh, has about 30 percent of their receivable base uh, in greater than 120 day category. So they have some stragglers that they need to, to pull in. And then uh, the other thing is if you don't have a line of credit, now would be a great time to, uh, to consider that. Uh, and if you do have a line of credit, you may want to consider increasing it. Mm. So those are, those are the things that I would really uh, tell business owners, whether you're brand new uh, or uh, have been through uh, a period of economic uncertainty before. Gotcha. Let's talk about mindset uh, before we get into some of those other points you made, because you, you, there, there was a lot there you shared, um, because mindset is one of those things that maybe is a little underrated sometimes <laughs> when, yeah. when right, we, we go straight to the, to the financials maybe and bypass the, uh, the mindset piece of it. To unpack that in terms of what you're referring to so I, i'm gonna i'm gonna tell a little story on myself john I, as you know i'm i'm pretty transparent uh i i watch the tv news uh i see the number of cases of covid19 uh i see the deaths i see the uh, spread to italy uh to spain now to the united states and what i was seeing was all the things that were happening. But what I was blind to is the fact that despite the building number of cases, despite the deaths, there are things going on that I just wasn't seeing. There are manufacturing concerns that have totally changed their operation from manufacturing cologne to sanitizer. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Hand sanitizer. Uh, there are companies that have totally revamped their manufacturing process to make ventilators. Uh, I heard of a company yesterday that donated 2 million masks to FEMA to help with uh, 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 disasters and uh, to have people so that they can be protected. And so what I wasn't seeing, what I was blind to is all of the great things uh, that America is doing to coming to come together during this crisis. And so what I would encourage, <laughs> I would just encourage everybody as I've encouraged myself, um, don't be blind to the things uh, that are going on in the United States where we're coming together where we're building community, where we're, we're striving to achieve the greater good. There are great things going on despite this uh, coronavirus uh, that are making America better and stronger. And we just need to have our eyes open to see those things. Wow. Uh, 
Bill, you could drop the mic right there on that one. That's 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 awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, th- th- those are inspiring words. Um, so you mentioned uh, some of the financial aspects of how running our business should change. Um, working to collect receivables faster, wor- working to uh, make sure we can build cash reserves if that's possible. Um, well, I'm sure businesses vary across the board, but um, I know there are some business owners out there that are like, what are you talking about, Bill? How can I build cash in the, the kind of environment I'm in right now that I find myself in? Because I see more money going out the door than's coming in in the short run. Yeah, and I and I think that's uh, that's a great question and and spot on. Uh, in the case of the one client that I had, uh, some of that hidden cash can be found in straggling accounts receivable. Uh, if you've got some some slow receivables and you can collect your money a little bit faster, uh, that would be one way. Uh, there may be situations where business owners may need to take personal cash reserves uh, and temporarily uh, invest that in their business. There are business owners that have a line of credit, but maybe have never used their line of credit because they either didn't see a need, uh, but uh, uh, sometimes tapping into that line of credit, even though you don't want to, uh, may be necessary. So those uh, are ways that you can build cash reserves. The other thing is I always tell my clients uh, to pay within terms. I'm not recommending that anybody go beyond terms, but you can actually, uh, if you have a, a, a payable that is due net 30, uh, there is no extra credit for paying in 10 days or 15 days. Sometimes you can temporarily increase your cash balance by letting those payments run their full term, uh, and then pay them. Good advice. So Bill, you talked about the opportunities that are out there for businesses to pivot and maybe to serve in a different way. Um, that requires maybe a little cash to invest in that, those pivots. Um, what, what, what would you, contemplate oh, how, how would you advise businesses that are considering that that see an opportunity uh maybe they want to pivot their business uh how would you advise them in terms of how, how they look at that the pros and the cons um of going in a different direction either permanently or temporarily yeah You know, uh, in that case, I rely very heavily on uh, uh, my professional board of advisors. Uh, I think the collective brain power uh, of a team can help you sort through any opportunities. Uh, I have a uh, a prospective client who has a technology platform uh, that he sells to schools And they use that technology platform to sell uh, logoed products of their respective schools online. So he was thinking about actually, you know, kicking that up a notch and seeing what the return would be because there's no people involved because the technology does the selling. And it would be a way for these schools maybe to um, create additional income streams while we're going through this period of economic uncertainty. Having said all that, uh, that kind of flies in the face of building those cash reserves that we mentioned. But by the same token, um, back to the comment that I made earlier, your value proposition may have changed uh, in this time. And if you're sensing that, speak to your board of advisors. I always coach my clients, have a really, really good banker, a really good CPA, Uh, a really good attorney and use that board of advisors along with other advisors uh, to be sure that you're making good sound moves. Uh, But then if you feel like you have the buy-in of the team, then by all means go for it. That's great. Folks, we're speaking with Bill McDermott and Bill is the principal at McDermott Financial Solutions. And also of course, 
usually the host of this show, but I'm filling in for him so I can interview him and get some of some of his thoughts on where we find ourselves. So you talk, Bill, you talked about uh, financing, uh, bank financing. You're, you're an ex banker, reforming banker. You like to call yourself. Uh, <laughs> um, what, what, it, what has, has, has much changed in the last couple of weeks here in terms of the way banks are reviewing a line of credit request or maybe increases to, the, to, to those uh, lines of credit? Uh, I certainly think uh, to be determined. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do know banks have rolled out their uh, business continuity plans. There's a lot of execution that takes that needs to take place operationally. Uh, there are some branches that have uh, drive-through only uh, in order to be sure they're continuing to serve their clients, but also avoiding uh, you know branch lines where social distancing. Uh, can't be achieved. Uh, On the loan approval side, John, I'd say um, too soon to tell, actually. However, 80% of a bank's income comes from making loans. Uh, Interest rates are still low. Uh, The Fed did reduce the discount rate uh, to banks by a full uh, percentage point uh, to induce them if they need to borrow money from the Fed to be able to uh, uh, to put those out in loans, they can do that. And so, what I would say is, uh, while we are in an uncertain economic time, uh, banks are still the first line of defense for a small, small business owner to obtain credit when needed. And uh, and so, because interest rates are low. Bank approvals have been high until recently. Uh, are they going to be impacted? I hope not. Um, but sometimes banks do look at credit tighter uh, in periods of, of uncertain economic times versus what they historically do. So too soon to tell. But uh, I would advise a client, don't be bashful about asking for a line of credit or a line of credit increase if you feel like you're going to need it. Well, and bank, uh, there, as you note, there are some cross currents going on here. I mean, with, with bank, uh, with interest rates at literally historic lows, uh, uh, record lows, banks' margins have gotten pounded right here recently. Uh, uh, and so they've got an incentive to redeploy some of their liquid assets into loans, uh, from a profitability point of view, if they can find good loans, right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Because, uh, you know, banks have the same issue. If that money's sitting in savings, like uh, uh, money sitting in a savings account, it's earning literally no interest. So if they can find good loans to make, by all means, they want to they deploy that capital. So folks don't just assume that the bank is not going to uh, give you that line of credit or uh, increase that line of credit right now because they've got um, some some incentives to look at good loans for sure. Um, Bill, you you one of the things that you're really active with right now in terms of pointing business owners toward uh, are the uh, is is the SBA emergency loan uh, opportunity. Um, I'll let you define what that is and, and, and tell people some of the details there. Yeah. And, and of course, a little bit of a personal story. Um, so because a big portion of my business is helping business owners find financing, uh, I interpret possibly I can be uh, a servant to the business community during this economic uh, time of uncertainty by helping them uh, obtain financing through the uh, program that was launched as part of the stimulus uh, package uh, called the Economic Injury Disaster Loans. And so big stipulation I want to state right up front, John, is first uh, to qualify for this program you do need to try to obtain credit from your bank first. Uh, This program is a second line of defense, not a first line of defense. Uh, 
Uh, secondly, uh, your biz to be eligible as a small business, uh, there is a size standard, and there's also uh, and that size standard is either either by number of people or amount of revenue, and it's varied by uh, industry code. So sorry to get a little nerdy on you here a little <laughs> bit and talk about some of the technical elements. That's what we've got you here for, Bill, is to walk us through all that. <laughs> so uh, I apologize to my listening audience for getting a little nerdy. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so this program is an excellent program. Uh, you also have to be in an uh, area that's been declared a disaster area. Uh, Governor Kemp uh, did make that request. It has been approved, so the entire state of Georgia uh, is eligible for these economic injury disaster loans. Uh, there is a three-step process. Uh, I put out a white paper on LinkedIn, so if someone wants to get some information about the program, uh, they can go to my pro- profile, look for the posts, uh, and, and find it there. Uh, the elements of the program are up to $2 million uh, per small business. Uh, you have to be able to show evidence that you've been declined by a bank. Usually that takes the form of a bank decline letter. Uh, the amount that you're requesting has to be tied directly to economic injury from COVID-19. Uh, for example, certainly if a, a restaurant has had to close and they've been unable to obtain credit uh, from their bank, uh, that lost revenue would would certainly be eligible. Uh, So up to $2 million, it can be used to repay uh, fixed debt, can be used for accounts payable, can be used for working capital, those operating expenses. Um, The interest rate is at 3.75% fixed, uh, and the terms can go up to 30 years. There's a three-step process plan. The first is there's a loan application. Uh, You can apply online. There are some financial requirements, uh, a personal financial statement on anyone who owns more than 20%. Uh, Most recent tax return, if you haven't filed your 19 return yet, then it'll be a balance sheet and income statement for 1231-19 and a couple of other small documents but you you apply directly to the SBA. This is the one program where it does not go through a bank. You're actually making application directly to the SBA. Uh, There is a caseworker that's assigned to your loan. Uh, They walk it through the underwriting and approval process. And uh, uh, then once it's approved, it's funded and closed. Uh, A little bit too soon to know how long this takes. It's literally a brand new program. Um, uh, but it is in place and applications are, you know, are beginning. So, so it's a little uncertain as to the timing and knowing when it's all going to, uh, once you submit the paperwork, it would get approved, but, um, presumably the, the, um, I guess the, I don't know if it's good or bad. Maybe you can tell us, uh, that you don't have a bank involvement because normally, as you say, you would have a bank involved in kind of working with the SBA on your behalf. Do, how do you, do you see that positively or negatively or, or what? Well, actually what happened. So um, the last disaster that we had was, uh, was a hurricane and there were actually physical damage uh, disaster loans that were available during that time. And this was really early in the time of McDermott Financial. But I actually helped business owners during that time that sustained uh, physical damage. Um, You know, for example, there was a a restaurant that I worked with down in Keys. And so I've actually had experience helping business owners apply uh, for loans uh, that were disaster loans uh, the last time that we had a significant hurricane that came up the East Coast. Gotcha. And Bill, what are the, the, uh, requirements or, or stipulations, if any, in terms of what 
industry you're in, are, are there any restrictions there that would prohibit you from taking advantage of this potential opportunity? Yeah. So to qualify as a small business, as I mentioned, there's a size standard uh, and there's a, there's a website that I reference in the white paper on the post that I mentioned. Um, but I would say based on my understanding, uh, most small businesses are going to qualify well under that size standard. Um, but to be qualified as a small business, you have to be at or below the size standard based on your particular industry code. Okay. So I think sounds like now's a good time to, to let folks know where they can find that white paper. Um, and, and you mentioned LinkedIn. So why don't you give folks a little direction on where they should go? Yeah. Give me a second. My computer uh, screen just went blank. So let me, uh, let me pull it back up here. Well, they can certainly be in touch with you directly, right? Yeah, they certainly can. The, um, I believe if you do a Google search for SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, mm-hmm. uh, you, should be able to, uh, you should be able to pull it up. Oh, here we go. Uh, you can go to disasterloan.sba.gov. Awesome disasterloan.sba.gov. And if you get stuck, call Bill. That's right. Happy uh, to help any way I can. Yeah. So, um, um, we're, we're going to come back to this here in a minute, but, uh, uh, if folks want to get a head start on this, Bill, tell, tell them how to get in touch with you. Yeah, you can reach me, uh, several ways. Uh, you can go to profits on purpose.net, uh, contact me that way. Uh, you can also uh, shoot me a message on LinkedIn. It's my profile is Bill J McDermott. Uh, also uh, email uh, B McDermott at MCDFS.com. And then also my mobile number is 770-597-3136. Uh, I will answer unless I'm in front of a client or on another zoom conference, I've got, uh, two, two others with clients today. Uh, but I'm happy to, uh, help, uh, small businesses in the area, uh, that need, need my help. That's awesome. Bill. Now you have a, um, uh, uh, you mentioned the, the white paper, uh, that you posted and folks, we'll get you in the show notes. We'll put a link there. Uh, to that so you can easily uh, find what bill uh, posted there so we'll 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 put that in our show notes Um, so that bill this has been great and and some really timely words and and helpful information and and great advice Um, anything else you'd like to add to to kind of sum up uh, what you've shared with us I I think first John uh a combination of mindset and skill set. Uh, we we make choices daily of how uh, how we embrace uh, the economic uncertainty around us. Uh, I caught myself uh, leaning towards fear. Uh, I was a little bit blind, or at least my vision was blurry to the wonderful things that are going on. Uh, we have reason for hope. We have reason for optimism. So I would just encourage everyone uh, in our listening audience to uh, to certainly have a mindset that we are going to get through this. Uh, America can literally accomplish anything once we pull together as community uh, and express kindness and uh, express love to each other. So mindset is huge. Uh, Skill set would be the second thing uh, we are dealing with with, uh, uh, days of economic uncertainty. Uh, and so the skill set is, uh, obviously make sure that your client base is diversified, build cash reserves the best you can collect faster, and then also have a, have a backstop in the form of a line of credit. Those would be the, the big takeaways. And if you've exhausted bank resources, 
the federal government has put put out a program to help all of Georgia and all of America's small businesses. Great words from Bill McDermott. Bill is the normally the host of Profit Sense, and I'm I'm gonna be glad to hand the reins back to you, Bill. You do a better job than I do, pal. Uh, but I agree, <laughs> you have done an excellent job, and uh, uh, thank you for having me on the show this morning. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, folks, we, just a um, uh, quick uh, reminder that this uh, show has is brought to you by uh, McDermott Financial Solutions and Bill McDermott. And if you want to keep up with the latest. In pro business news, uh, follow uh, uh, follow us on, here on social media for those stories, uh, and listen to to listen to future Profit Sense podcast. Uh, check out ProfitSenseRadio dot com, and uh, check out an arch- the, the archive of uh, all Bill's shows. Uh, he he does a great job. So for Bill McDermott. This is John Ray. Join us next time on another edition of Profit Sense with Bill McDermott.